Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Tokakis. On the menu today, we have carrot curls and broccoli salad, Tex-Mex chicken, orzo pasta, and caramelized apple slices. So let's get started. The first thing I want to start with is the Tex-Mex chicken. And this um, is a really easy, simple, quick to make, um, and delicious, and it's very versatile as well. So the first thing I'm going to need is one cup of tomato sauce. This is one of those recipes that you can you you want to make again and again because, um, it, as I said, it's very versatile and simple. Easy on the budget, easy on the waste, and fun to eat. Also, we're going to use um, one tablespoon of tomato paste that goes in here. And the other thing about this is. Tex-Mex chicken is that you can also do it in the um, slow cooker. So you can set it up in the morning and come back home midday or in the evening to a nice hot dish of chicken with a really wonderful aroma. Uh, so we have the tomato sauce in here. We have the, um, the tomato paste. I'm going to add a tablespoon of cumin in here as well. A small white onion chopped in pieces that goes in here as well. Then I'm going to add two cloves of garlic. And the, gar the cloves of garlic, I'm going to um, slice them up really thin, really fine. So I'm going to mince this. And in it goes. So I'm going to give this a mix. And I'm going to add some salt and pepper to it as well. Oh, I don't like to using too much salt, so I'm going to use about a, half, a quarter of a teaspoon or so. And then some nice um, black pepper. I like to use the, the ones here, the freshly grated one. But if you have the regular ground pepper, black pepper, you can, you can use that as well. So now what I'm going to do is bring, uh, turn the heat on here and put the chicken pieces inside. And here I have about a pound and a quarter, pound and a half of uh, skinless chicken thighs, which are wonderful piece of meat because, as I said earlier, they're very um, economical. And these are boneless and skinless. Um, but if, even if you can get them with the skin on, you want to take the skin off and debone them yourself, and they're even cheaper. So um, sometimes they come, these, the chicken thighs come with a little bit of fat on it. And I'm just, just my thing, I always remove any visible fat from meat. So. Um, I do that to these chicken thighs as well. And these I've already done. And what I do is that these little pieces of fat here, I like to remove them. And you can do that with uh, kitchen um, shears or, or scissors or with a small utility knife too. That works. So I'm going to take some of this fat off like this. And some of this filament and this kind of like membrane. So to um, these pieces, I'm also going to add a little bit of salt, just to sort of flavor everything. I know this is my preferred method of measuring. All right, so. So then I'm going to put these in here. And let me clean up here a little bit while that comes to, a, I'm going to bring it to a boil and then reduce, cover it with the lid and reduce the heat and let it simmer for about 30 minutes. 
All right, there we go. That's boiling. I'm going to stir it or mix it to coat that all the pieces. So now I'm going to take this uh, poblano pepper, put that in here. This is a um, rather mild, um, one of the mildest um, Mexican peppers. And so we still kind of, especially with some of the ones that are, they are, have a lot more heat, you really want to be careful with the seeds and make sure that you wash your hands. and not touch any parts of your face or anything or your eyes because you'll be tearing for hours. So these aren't too bad. So it just gives it enough heat, gives this chicken just enough heat to uh, this, uh, the pepper along with the cumin, just uh, it's all the flavoring really that's in here and the pep and the garlic of course, but that's about it. And it's really very flavorful. And what I like about this recipe, it's this chicken recipe is that it, the chicken really cooks nice and um, soft, so it pulls apart, so you can make like a pulled chicken sandwich. We today here are going to serve it with um, an orzo pasta, another one of my favorite. It's um, simple dishes to make at home, and it's really my go-to dish. It's the kind of side dish to have when there's nothing in the house. There's always that. It's one of my staples at home. I'm going to put this in here. Oh, I can feel that little bit of heat that's in these peppers. So I'm going to put these in here and give it one more stir. Work those in there. All right. So I put the lid on it, lower the heat to a simmer. And we are good. I'm going to wash my hands because of these little seeds. One other item that I'm going to add to the chicken is a tablespoon of this Worcestershire sauce. And I can use this one. I actually should have added it earlier, but and you do want to, um, you know, check um, this chicken every now and again just to make sure it's not sticking or make sure it's done. Okay. So that's going. So the next thing we're going to work on is the orzo pasta. As I said, it's like a staple in my house. So now what I'm going to do is I just add about two tablespoons of oil in the pan, in a pot. There we go. And I cook this in a, so this first step is sort of similar to a risotto style of cooking. So I'm going to coat the the pasta with the oil because it has a tendency to stick. So um, by doing this, I prevent that from happening. So this is half a cup. I'm just going to do it twice because I need to. I need a whole cup. So here's half a cup. Another half. I'm going to stir this. Just like risotto, I want to make sure that each, each grain is coated with oil. So to give this some flavor, you can do it two ways. One way is you can use um, a chicken broth or any kind of broth that you like for the cooking liquid. Or um, what I often do is just use regular water, throw in a tablespoon of um, tomato paste or maybe half a cup of tomato sauce. Today I'm going to use tomato paste. So 
some salt and pepper, and that's all the seasonings that it needs. I'm going to add two cups of water. So I have one cup of um, pasta. I'm going to add two cups of water to it. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of um, tomato paste. It is nice and thick, and it just gives it a, a lot of um, a lot of flavor. Stir that right in. So just like rice, I'm going to bring this to a boil, give it a quick stir, and lower the heat and let it cook. And it cooks in about ten minutes. I'm going to cover this and keep an eye on it so to, until it comes to a boil. In the meantime, I'm going to take a quick peek here at my chicken. I'm going to lower this heat a little bit more because it seems to be boiling a little fast. I really just want it to simmer. This looks like it's boiling. Perfect. So I'm going to lower the heat, stir it one more time. And as I think I've mentioned, you do want to keep your, your, eye, your eyes on, the, on it because it does tend to have a tendency to stick to the bottom. Especially if you cook it on high heat, so you do want to watch that. Okay, so these two are going. So the next thing I'm going to work on is the salad, my carrot curls and broccoli salad. This is really, I love making the salad. It's such a, has a, such a uh, whimsical aspect to it. So in here I have um, three carrots. Uh, I've used four carrots all together. Three I've already cut into these uh, curls. See how pretty they look? So what I'm going I'm to show you how I do this, how I get those cute little curls in my salad. So here's a carrot. I'm going to get a cutting board. So I'm going to chop off the end. I've already peeled this. And then, with a vegetable peeler, I just come in and just cut it this way. I'm going to make these a little smaller. So depending on the, uh, you know, the, if you start from the top to the bottom, or you can just start at the end, midway, and then you get smaller curls. All right, so in it goes. So as I said, I did this with, I have four carrots in here. Then I'm going to, also before I go on, I'm going to um, get my onions that go in here. This is a red onion, and I'm going to use about four slices because I'm going to add the onions to my, um, to my salads. But I, what I like is that I, I soak the onion slices in the vinegar. So it really flavors, it does two things. It kind of flavors the vinegar, and it removes some of that bite from the, uh, from the onion. So I, was, I want nice, big, thin, but large slices. So I'm going to remove that. Then I just do, uh, and oops, as thin as I can get them. So I'm going to do four. I'm going to do one more because that first one didn't come up quite the size I wanted. So I do, I allow one each, so four. Uh, if you wanted to add more, you could, of course, to taste. And then to that, I'm going to add about three tablespoons of um, red wine vinegar. I do like the red wine vinegar in the salad. So I'm going to do, I ball about three tablespoons. So there's one, two, and three. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside here. I'm going to keep a quick check on my pasta here because it looks like it's not doing good. I might, I might just lower it a little bit. There we go. All right, this here is done. 
So the next thing I'm going to add to my whimsical carrot curls broccoli salad is the broccoli. And I allow for about two, two crowns for four people, which what I've done is, well, let me pour them in here. I've already washed it. I've washed the broccoli and um, really cut out a lot of the stock and just keep the florets. And I'll cut them to this size. You can cut it smaller if you want. And you just kind of come in here and cut with the, with the uh, so that you see an opening, like so. Oops, that one went over. And here, yeah, this one you could, you could, uh, you know, it's all relative. As I look at these, they look kind of big, but when I had the crown, I was, these look fairly small pieces. So, in this goes. Then I'm going to add to that two tablespoons of um, raisins. I'm just going to eyeball this. It doesn't have to be exact. There's one. And this just gives it that night, that sweetness that contrasts the crunch of the um, broccoli. So the broccoli's crunchy, the raisins are a little chewy, and the carrots are in between. So now I'm going to add about a, t a couple of tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Again, I'm going to eyeball this. You want about two tablespoons. And I want to do the oil first because I want the oil to really stick to, to the foods, to the vegetables. So now I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And some pepper, nicely fresh ground pepper. I personally like adding my, the oil and the vinegar separately. If you wanted to um, mix it together and then add it, you could, but I find that the oil goes a lot further this way. So now I'm going to add the onions that have been soaking in the red wine vinegar. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. And check on my pasta. Just about one more minute as I check, the, let me check the chicken. Mmm, start to smell really good. All right, back goes the lid. One last peek at my at my pasta here. Oh, which, there we go. And that looks like it's ready. Great, perfect. So I'm going to turn the heat off on that. and set it aside. So the next thing we're going to work on is the caramelized apple slices. So here I have some apples that I have already peeled and I put a, a piece of paper towel, wet paper towel to prevent them from getting, um, from going brown. So here I have the rest of my ingredients. So I like using golden delicious apples because um, they just cook, real, cook up really nice, but you can use any kind of cooking apple. Um, so peel it. It's the old fashioned way with a vegetable peeler here. So here are the apples, and I'm going to cut them into about, um, mm, let's say about a quarter of an inch thick. And the way I like to do it is just, um, I do it different ways and different times, but this seems to work fine.
So here um, I have a skillet that I've added um, three tablespoons of sugar and I've um, squeezed in a little bit of lemon juice, about a half a teaspoon or so. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of water. So I'm melting the sugar, so there's about two tablespoons of water in there. Now, when you're doing this, you really need to be um, very cautious because it's sugar and it does get very hot and you're going to heat it to the, sort of when it starts turning a caramel color and you'll see it and it happens very quickly. So you don't want to, you know, put the, the sugar and the water and the lemon and walk away. You want to be here and you want to mix it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to add the apples to it, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of um, ginger to it. I'm going to take a small piece of ginger and uh, dice it really fine. This is really fun to watch because you can see the bubbles just um, becoming smaller and smaller, and of course that's as the water is evaporating. And you'll see sort of like a yellowish tinge. And that's when I usually add the apples because I don't want them to burn. So I can I see that now. And you can start smelling it too. You can start smelling the burned sugar. I'm gonna add this in. And just keep it moving. You can do this with bananas as well. There we go. I'm going to remove it from the heat because I want to get my ginger, and I don't want these to cook very much. So here's the ginger. Oops. And I use about one inch. Again, this recipe here, too, is very versatile. As you can see, a lot of the stuff we make at home, the, the nice thing about it is that it is versatile, and you can, by that I mean you can add things to it depending on, depending on your mood. If you, with this recipe, if you want it to be a little richer, you could add, you know, serve it with some ice cream or frozen yogurt or drizzle some chocolate, melted chocolate on it, or even um, spread some chocolate chips on it too. I bet you that would be really good. So what I like about the ginger in here is that it just gives it a little bit of a kick. Okay, so I'm going to put that in. As I said, that will give it a nice kick. There's that caramel forming, kind of like a syrup. Give it caramel syrup. Okay, I think it's done. Turn that off and put it aside. So, now is back to my salad and plate it in a nice uh, bowl. Let's see, let's take one last check on the chicken. Oh yeah, that looks awesome, look at that. Mm. Smells really good. Okay, turn that off, put that aside. I'm going to pour this in here. Oh. So this is all dressed. So in it goes. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Really nice whimsical salad. Mmm, great. You could just picture this on the barbecue, uh, on a barbecue bowl. That's the summer approaches, although you wouldn't know it by the weather we're having, but so here's a beautiful, colorful, whimsical salad of carrot curls and, and um, broccoli florets. And the next thing I want to plate is my orzo pasta. I'm going to fluff it up with the fork first. See how simple that was? Mm. 
Mm. Especially when you eat it nice and hot. Awesome. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And of course, now we're going to plate our chicken. Wait till you see this. Look at that. I don't like, I'm going to remove the um, poblano peppers here. Put these aside. This is so flavorful. It's just amazing with such few ingredients. So this is a really um, budget-friendly meal. Look at the pieces, beautiful pieces of chicken. As I was saying, you can make um, sandwiches like pulled, pulled chicken, use the same method and make pulled pork. You'll have your very own Mexican cantina. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Look at that and delicious. Okay, finally we are plating the dessert. Look at these beautiful apple slices. with the syrup, it's all good. A little bit of sugar, but that's okay. You know, because I just have some uh, raisins around, I'm just gonna sprinkle a few on top. As I said though, you could use um, chocolate chips, walnut. walnuts is usually a favorite of mine too. I'll add some walnuts on top. Isn't that pretty? So here we have today another beautiful, delicious, easy on the budget, easy on the waist, an overall friendly meal. Um, we, and we have made today a very whimsical um, salad with carrot curls and broccoli florets. We've also made um, Tex-Mex chicken with just a little bit of heat from the poblano uh, pepper and an easy, simple side dish of orzo pasta with just a touch of um, tomatoes, uh, tomato paste to give it just a little, a little coloring and some delicious uh, slices of apples that have been caramelized and with just a little touch of heat from the ginger. So we hope you enjoyed these recipes that we made today and try some of them at home yourself. And we also want to thank um, Calarisa's Farm Stand and Garden Center for some of the wonderful food that they provided for us, ingredients they provided for us. And most of all, I want to thank you so much for joining us and please do it again. Thank you. Bye-bye.